Okay, the reason why I'm having us pause from the other video is because if we're using the TI-84 plus CE, like the one we've been using in class, it's a little bit different process here for the inverse normal. Everything else so far should be the same. So, in this case, the mean is still 2.3. That hasn't changed. And maybe over here I'll write, hey, the standard deviation, also just to remind us, is 0 0.42. But this time, now we're looking for the shortest 40% of wait times. So this time we're given an area and we want to find the cutoff. If we're talking about the shortest time, you think of the left or right side. In this case, we're talking about the left side. So we know that this area is 40%. And we're saying, hey, what's this cutoff, which I'm going to call x, and we want to find that. So this process is a little bit different and we're going to use what we call the inverse normal. So I'm going to switch to my um, camera real quick and we can see my calculator. So on the calculator, we're going to follow the same steps of hitting second and then vars. But this time, rather than doing number two, we're going to go down to three. And it asks you for some inputs. So the area is 0.4. Sorry, it looks like I already have this in here. For the 40%, the mean is the 2.3. The standard deviation is 0 0.42, and this time we're doing left, because it's a left-tailed test, right? We're looking for the area on the left, and we're going to hit paste. For the record, I'll do it in a second, but this writing what function you use and the inputs will constitute your work for this chapter, along with the picture. And we're going to hit enter, and 2.19, I think in this case, was it minutes or seconds? Is I think it's minutes, is going to be our cutoff. So here your work, if we write the function we use, the inverse normal, we then write our inputs of 0.4 for the 40% is the area, 2.3 is the mean, 0.42 is the standard deviation, um, and then we're going to put left on here so they know what test we did, and our answer is 2.19. In this case, just so you know, it was minutes. So this time only represents minutes, 2.9. 2.19 minutes is the short, but at that time or less is the shortest 40% of wait times. Okay, same problem here. So we still have 2.3 as our mean, but the longest 25% of wait times. So notice once again, if they're given a percent, we're saying, okay, the longest, this time it's going to be on the right, but this area is 25%. Tell me what this cutoff is. So let's look back to the calculator. So we're going to hit second vars. We're going to go down to number three for inverse normal. The area is the thing that's changing. Now we have 25%, so 0.25. The mean and standard deviation hasn't changed. And this time, since we want the longest, we're going to go to the right. And we're going to go down to paste and then hit enter again. And we get 2.58 minutes this time. So remember the work you show is by writing, hey, you draw the picture, but then also you write your inverse norm. This time we did 0 0.25 for 25%, 2.3, oops, sorry, for the mean, 0 0.42, and then this time we say right, and we got 2.58 minutes is our answer. Okay, let's look at the next part. So this one, consider IQ scores for a certain high school have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So a highly selective school accepts only, accept, only accept applicants that are above the 75th percentile. So think back to our box and whisker plots. Remember 75th percentile means the area below this number is 75% or the area to the left of this number is 75%. So here we're saying, okay, our mean is 100. And 75% is going to be above the mean. So we're saying, okay, in this case, if this is 75%, what is that cutoff? So as you might think, we're going to use the inverse normal. Remember, the first thing it asks for is the mean, which is 100. Then it asks, actually, sorry, the first thing it asks for is the area, which is 75%. So we're going to put 0.75. Then it asks for the mean of 100. Then it asks the standard deviation of 15. And then in this case, we're doing to the left. Okay, so let's see what that looks like on the calculator. 
So we go second bars, go down to number three. We had 75%, a mean of 100, a standard deviation of, sorry, just forgot it, 15. And then we're doing left. So their IQ would be, have to be 110. Point one two is going to be the cutoff score. The se second one is similar, so you have the same mean and standard deviation, but now it wants the middle 50%. So we're saying, hey, if we take the ch chunk out of the middle, this percent right here is going to be 50%. So let's look at a calculator. We're going to have still a second bars go down to number three because it's giving us percent. We're doing now 50%, same means, same standard deviation, but notice how your calculator gives you the option to hit center, and then you just hit paste, and it's going to be between 89.88 and 110.12. So we're going to do inverse norm of 0.50, 100, 15, and then middle, or sorry, center is how they call it. And we get two cutoffs, right? The low and the high. So 89.88 and 110.12. Okay, this next one is a little bit trickier because it says how many students does the school need to enroll to have 500 with IQs above 120. So notice we'll still have a standard deviation, sorry, a mean of 100, a standard deviation of 115, sorry, 15, so we get 115, we get 85. But now we're saying, okay, I've got a cutoff above 120. So my cutoff's 120, and we want this area here to represent 500 people, kind of, or at least 500 people. So this one, notice how we're not no longer given the percent, but we kind of want to find the percent, and then we'll kind of convert that to people. So this time we're using the normal CDF. So if you go to the normal CDF function on your calculator, let's remind ourselves, second bars, go down to number two. Your lower bound in this case is 120. Your upper, you want is some really large number. I usually use 10 to the 99th. Your mean is 100, and your standard deviation is 15, and we're going to hit paste. And we get that that's about 9%, so 0 0.09. So here, as we input our things, remember this is constituting your work. Oftentimes, we usually just use infinity as the upper bound, and then we put some big number in our calculator, right? 100 for the mean, 15 for standard deviation. We end up with 0 0.0912. But we're really saying, hey, 9% of some number, so 0 0.0912 of some number that I don't know equals 500 kids. So if I divide both sides by 0 0.0912, I end up getting that x is equal to... 5,482.46. And the thing here is if I round that down, like regular rounding would teach me, that I would have less than 500. So in this case, we do need to round up to 5,483 5, students. Okay, that's it for my part, but go ahead and catch a